Mother Russia Bleeds was developed by Le Cartel Studio and was released in September 2016. It is also a beat em up that I waited a long, long time to play. So let's see what it's like, shall we? Just to preface my review, this game is extremely dark in tone and the story is quite bleak and violent. So if you're thinking about picking this game up for your kids or something, please don't. If I had to compare it to other games, I would say it's probably like Streets of Rage meeting up with Hotline Miami in a dark alley to do drugs and then beat the shit out of some homeless people afterwards. You can choose from a few different characters at the beginning of the game, and almost immediately you are thrown into a ring with some homeless guys to get you warmed up for how the game is going to play. After that you are betrayed and you are taken away to an undisclosed location. And then you wake up in a decrepit lab where you've been hooked on a drug called Necro and you have to fight your way out and find out who put you in this place and why. Which brings me to explaining about your new drug addiction. In most beat em up games, in order to heal yourself you have to obtain health items such as burgers, full bodies of meat, apples, and the like. But that would be just too normal in the world of Mother Russia Bleeds, so the developers added a twist. You have to use Necro to heal. And how do you get more of it? Well, by extracting it straight from the dying bodies of the very people that you beat down throughout the game, of course. It would seem your enemy's veins are pumping with this same drug, and once they are down for the count, you may have a chance to extract the drug from their body before they die. How insane is that? You have a gauge on the top left of the screen that shows how many shots you have currently for use, and each shot can either restore a bit of health or give you a dose of berserk power that can make you a force to be reckoned with. While in this rage mode, you can insta-kill enemies and take out crowds with almost no effort. After being exposed to both uses of the Necro drug, I was hoping for any enemy that I beat down to be twitching so I could extract some more juice from him or her in case I needed more health or wanted to go on a rampage, which was pretty often. From the very beginning of the game, you'll notice that enemies will surround you and tackle you mercilessly. The only way to escape once tackled is to press buttons as quickly as possible and escape their grasp. Otherwise, you will take more and more damage as time passes. The best way to keep this from happening is to use your dash maneuver. It has invincibility frames to help you avoid punches and kicks if timed correctly. Also, if you add a punch or a kick during the dash, you can do some pretty great attacks. Using kick during the dash will do a slide kick that knocks foes forward. With a punch, it causes a dashing punch which does the same. I used these like crazy to maintain crowd control when things got too hectic. Another move that came in handy as long as the enemy wasn't able to knock me out of the air was the jump kick. It could create a nice bowling pin effect with enemies and send them flying away from you, leaving you space to take care of everyone else that's in close proximity. The kick is also effective for knocking an enemy to the ground, so you can get some time to focus. Speaking of enemies on the ground, when one is laid out you can use this time to punch their face in. If another bad guy approaches you while you're doing this, I recommend using a kick to stop assaulting the downed foe and take out the new target. The challenge is high for a lot of areas and most of the time I felt like I was on my toes because of the sheer number of enemies on the screen at one time. It felt much more chaotic than most other beat em ups I've played. This may have had something to do with the fact that I had an AI player in the fight with me, which might have upped the amount of enemies at one time. Dying will more than likely happen a lot, but thankfully the checkpoints are quite fair. I was never upset by where the game placed me after a death and I had unlimited chances to continue. Also there's a chapter select so I could replay a level that I wanted to do better on or pick up where I left off. Mother Russia Bleeds is a good bit longer than your standard beat em up game and that's honestly more than fine by me. For the $13.50 I paid for it, I knew after the first hour alone that I was going to get more than my money's worth out of it. I couldn't wait to go back through and make the levels that gave me trouble the first time my bitch. Or snag some of the achievements I missed. Or just go back and hone my skills some more to get better at dodging. Plus the fact that it has co-op, even though it's local co-op only, which is kind of a bummer. But at the same time I understood because I got to enjoy being there with friends and exclaiming at what awesome moves we just pulled off or how we juggled some homeless crack addict back and forth with a well placed throw and kick. But even if your friends are too scared to play this game because of its hyper violence and at point bizarre sexual themes, you can always bring in the help of an AI bot. Now sometimes this isn't the best thing in the world, but sometimes I die during a boss fight only to have my AI compadre beat the living hell out of the boss and not even take so much as a hit which was pretty unexpected. But I recommend going solo if you aren't playing with a friend. Just knowing that playing with more people equals more chaos and the difficulty ramps up accordingly. All in all, I find this to be a great throwback to the days of arcade style beat em ups, and I've wanted a new one for a long time. So when I saw this with the Totline Miami style violence, four player co-op action, and just raw and fun looking brutality, I couldn't wait to get my hands on this title. And speaking from liking old school games, I can say that for me, it was well worth the wait.